Hi, I'm Eva Murphy from Electronic Engineering at IT Sligo, and this is my Leave Insert Maths Grinds channel. I'll regularly add new videos for both higher and ordinary level maths, so make sure you subscribe below and click the bell icon to be notified of new videos. This simultaneous equation type is where we have a linear equation. I know that because the highest power of the letters is 1. So I have a linear equation and I have a quadratic equation and I know that because it has a power of 2 beside its letters. Okay, This is quite different to the x, y, z type uh, simultaneous equations that are also on your course. What you'll find with this type is no matter what you do to either equation, whether you square root it, whether you square the bottom one, no matter what you do, you won't be able to cancel out one of the letters like we can do in the x, y, z type. Okay, you will always, when you add the two equations together, you'll always be left with um, a mix of a and b's in your answer. And remember the whole idea of simultaneous equations is that we try and get rid of one of the letters at a time so that we can solve for the other letter. Okay, so we need a new method to solve these ones. Right, so what we do is we take the linear equation, so this is the linear one here, this is a quadratic, and sometimes this can be a circle equation, and you, you'll, you'll start to recognize that when the circle chapter is done, so x squared plus y squared equals a number is typically a circle. Okay, so a quadratic and a linear equation in this case. So we take the linear one, and we write it in terms of a letter. Now I have two choices here when I say write it in terms of a letter. I can say E equals or I can say B equals. So if I say E equals, you can see that I bring the B over, the 2B over and becomes minus 2B. I'll bring the 1 over and it'll become minus 1. Okay, or I could write it in terms of B. Now in this case I have 2b, so I'm going to change him to 2b for now. And again the a will come over and the 1 will come over. So I'll have minus a minus 1. Okay, I have to write it in terms of a letter, so that means write it in terms of b, not 2b. So I have to divide across by 2. Okay, so I'm left with b being equal to minus, I can call this a over 2, or a half a minus a half. Okay, so I can write it in terms of a letter, and I'll, I'll come back to it in a minute as to which letter is the better one to go with, okay? But let me, first of all, let me tell you what you end up doing, okay? So, in the x, y, z ones, we linked them together by adding the two equations, okay? In this one, we link them together by taking the linear equation and feeding it into the quadratic. So what I'm going to do with a being equal to minus 2b minus 1 is I'm going to take that and everywhere that a appears in the other equation I'm going to sub in minus 2b minus 1 instead of a. Okay, if I had chosen b, if I had chosen to write in terms of b and had gone with that option, what you would have done is, I'll just go from the bottom so you can see the difference, I would put in minus a half a and minus a half there instead of b, and I'd have also put it in here. Minus a half my a minus a half ought to be squared. Okay, so you can go either way. You can either take that orange root where you sub in for a, or take the green root where you sub in for b. Okay, I would always go the orange root in this case because um, it's not fractions, it's whole numbers. Okay, and it's always much easier to work with whole numbers than it is for fractions. So I wouldn't choose B. I would choose A. Okay, and I wouldn't write out all the options for B either. I would look at the two equations here. I would say that there's no number in front of A, so I won't have to divide across by a number. So let's write it in terms of A. Right, so let's continue on. Once you've established which letter you're writing it in terms of, you then feed it into the quadratic. So instead of a there, I am going to have minus 2b minus 1 all to be squared minus minus 2a minus 1 times b. Okay, there's my a, there's my b. OK, 
okay, this b squared and equal to 3 must still stay. So that is the quadratic written in a different format where you have fed the linear equation into the quadratic. So you have linked the two equations in a different manner. So you're still solving them simultaneously or at the same time, one being fed into the other. Okay, when you're multiplying this out, always remember that anything squared is itself by itself. So that's what it will look like when you multiply minus 2b minus 1 squared. Okay, this b that's here, I can bring him around the front. That's the same. It doesn't matter if I have minus 2a minus 1 times b or b times minus 2a minus 1. But for some people, it looks easier if the letter is at the front of the, back, the bracket. So I haven't done any multiplication here. I've literally just brought that b around the front to make it look easier for me to multiply. Still, the plus b squared, still equal to 3. Okay, now let's multiply. Okay, so there's two ways I, I see these brackets being multiplied. You can go minus 2b by everything in the second bracket with arrows or written out like this. So minus 2b by everything in the second bracket and then go back for the minus 1 by everything in the second bracket. Okay, so whichever way you do it with the arrows, like here, or you write it out, doesn't matter, same net result, let's multiply it. Minus 2b by minus 2b, well let's do the signs first, minus by minus is a plus, two twos are four, b squared, minus 2b by minus one, minus by minus again a plus, two ones are two, b, plus 2b again, minus by minus is a plus, one's one is one. Okay, now I'm going back up here to continue my multiplication. So minus b by minus 2a is plus 2. Oh, my apologies, I have a typo there. I was wondering where the a appeared from. Um, I hope you spotted that earlier quicker than I did. Okay, so minus by minus is a plus 2 b by b, b squared. And then I have minus b by minus 1, minus by minus is a plus, b by 1 is b. Okay, still need these ones, don't forget them, it's really easy to forget to write those down, that's why I keep mentioning them. Okay, so now I start to see some sort of a quadratic jumping out of this. How do I know that? Well, I can see b terms, I can see b's, and I can see numbers. Okay, so let's tidy up. So b squares, b squares, b squares, we'll tidy them together, we'll then bring the b's together, and then we will bring the numbers together. That minus 3 is going to come over the other side of the equals to sign, that's what I'm going to do here. So the b squares first, 4b squared, 2b squared, 1, so that's 4 and 2 is 6 and 1 is 7b squared. How many b's have I? The ones in green, 2b, 2b and 1b is 5b. I have plus 1, minus 3, that's coming over equal to 0. Because all quadratics have, must take the form, ax squared plus bx plus c being equal to 0. So that's why that minus 3 has to come over. So you're then left with 7b squared plus 5b minus 2 being equal to 0. Okay, which is a quadratic. As you know, you have two choices for solving a quadratic. You can do factorizing, where you do bracket, 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 bracket. Okay, or you can do the minus b formula. Okay, I'm going to take the opportunity to do the minus b formula in this one, just, just for practice. Okay, so I have 7b squared plus 5b minus 2 being equal to 0. If you remember in pink over here, I wrote down what's called the general form of a quadratic, which was ax squared plus bx plus c being equal to zero. So from here, I can see my a is seven, my b is five, and my c is minus two. a is seven, b is five, 
can see is minus 2. Okay, from the log tables, you will take down this formula. Okay, and when I have my A, B and C written like this, I tend not to look at my quadra quadratic anymore. I just fill in the coefficients of my quadratic from these numbers that are here. Something else to watch out for is in the log tables it always has x equal to here and it just kind of defaults to x even though in your quadratic you may not be solving for x. We're not solving for x in this case, we're solving for b. Okay, so technically my answer is b is equal to and don't get confused then between b in your quadratic and this b here. Okay, so a little bit confusing, so just you kind of have to have a wi your wits about you. So it's minus b, so minus 5 plus or minus the square root of 5 squared minus 4 times a times minus 2 all over 2a. Okay, just for anybody who can't see where those values came from, okay, that's my 4, that's my a. That's my C, and again, 2A down the bottom. Okay, I literally just subbed in A being 7, B being 5, and C being minus 2 into here. Okay, and then you tidy it up. So B, B equals minus 5 plus or minus. I tend to put this part into my calculator using the square root of 5 squared. I'm just doing it here now as I talk. And I'm getting plus or minus 9 all over 14. Okay, so as you study, if you find any of these questions or any question on any topic that you want me to do, just put it into the comments below and, and I can take a look at it. Right, so let's finish this one out. How do we split him up? Well, my two answers comes from here. When I talk about two answers, wouldn't you get, if you had done a bracket, bracket, or factorization, one answer from this bracket and one from here? So a quadratic always has two answers. They may be the same, but it also has two answers. Or any uh, equation will have the highest power of x or the highest power of the letter. It will have that many solutions. So the highest power here is squared, so that's why w I know we're going to have two answers. The two answers comes from the plus or minus. So my first answer comes from minus 5 plus 9 over 14. And my second answer comes from minus 5 minus 9 over 14. So what has happened? I'm just working out now for a second. What has happened is that that plus has become my first answer and the minus down here has become my second answer. Okay, and you just put them into your calculator, hit the fraction button first, minus 5 plus 9 over 14, and I'm getting two sevens for that one. And at the bottom I'm getting minus 5 minus 9 over 14 minus 1 for that one. So these are my two answers for B. Okay, why two answers? Does that make sense? Okay, well, let me do just a little graph for you. Down here. Okay, so if I just do a graph down here, down the middle. Okay, and I plot a quadratic. I know it's a smiley face. I know that because if I look at my quadratic, can you see that my squared term is positive? That's a plus 7b squared. So when that term, and it's always the squared term that you look at, when that's positive, you get a smiley face, which is this. If that was a minus b term, so maybe minus 7b squared, I would get a sad face, which is a frown. Okay, so it's a smiley face as such. Okay, I've forgotten why I'm drawing this. Yes, okay, so I'm explaining why there's two answers for B. So then my 
So that's my quadratic plotted. If I plot any line, can you see that a line will plot? Yeah, the screen's frozen. back. So when I plot my line, why is not responding to me? Now it's back. Okay. So that's my line. So that's a plus 2b plus 1. I know that's linear because the highest power of it is a single one. And, and this is stuff you'll see when you do a, a functions chapter and um, where this stuff ties in. So if we look at where these two lines intersect, you can see that there's one intersection point there and one intersection point there. We normally call these x and y coordinates. It just so happens in this one that they're called a and b. So one of them is an a b point and the other one is the other a b point. So what you found here is the b coordinate of two points and I now must find the a. Okay, so how do I find my a? Well, just like in the x, y, z ones, we sub back into either equation. The easiest one by far is the linear one that you have written here. Okay, where a is equal to minus 2b minus 1. Well, when b was equal to 2 sevenths, which is here, my a is equal to minus 2 times 2 sevenths minus 1. And when you put that into the calculator, you get minus 11 over 7. And when b was minus 1, which is this answer here, a is equal to minus 2 times minus 1, minus 1, and you get 1. So they are your two matching values for a. And then that concludes this type of simultaneous equation. If you've enjoyed this video, then why not join us in IT Sligo and use maths in practice? In conjunction with industry, we've designed an exciting new program in electronics and self-driving technologies, which uses cutting-edge techniques such as artificial intelligence, computer vision and virtual and augmented reality. You'll need a H5 in maths to qualify. Check out the link below.